On March 26, Trace Labs held their global search party CTF event, which is basically like a hybrid CTF where you help law enforcement find missing persons. And it is an amazing event, but we really don't understand too much about it. So in this particular episode, I'm super excited. We are going to be interviewing one of the teams from the Trace Labs CTF event and understanding what it's all about, how you can prepare, and how you can compete in the next Trace Lab CTF event. Let's go check it out. All right. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Hello. Good. So we are joined by Brian Tolliver, Casey Gaska, Michael Fink, and Jess Bishop, all members of the Simply Cyber community, I might add, and a very successful performing team in the March Trace Lab CTF event. So to kind of kick things off, Casey, I'll direct it to you. Can you kind of tell me what was the team's structure and how did it fit into the event? So going into it, we were kind of just going free flow of each of us taking a couple cases because they assign out for this one they assigned out six different missing persons cases that we worked on mm -hmm. and we started off all right each take one and just start digging in let's just see what happens but then 15 20 minutes in we realized that we needed to make a shift in how we were like set up because mm -hmm. we needed to reach out to our judge there were a lot of questions going back and forth between us we utilized discord so we were on voice chat the whole time for the event and it shifted so that i was taking more of a team lead type role mm -hmm. in interacting with our judge reviewing some of our submissions before we actually submitted them and just kind of answering any questions about evidence we were finding new avenues to try and dig into and any other oh i'm a little stuck here what do we think we should do here what, what else should we check out things like that yeah so it was kind of like operators and management almost in order to have the team fully fully operational yeah that's kind of how how it ended up shaping up and nice. i think we all felt that it ended up working out really well that way cool so brian let me throw it to you i got a question as far as the event goes i you know how does one prepare for this because and kind of take a step back is it it's called ctf but this is unlike any other type of ctf event that i've ever heard of so how is it kind of different from a ctf perspective or as an event and how did you prepare for it well so i've done a couple ctfs before um, which were nothing like this. They were uh, at my own pace type thing. It wasn't necessarily a time load. It was over a couple days, but it also wasn't a spur of the moment ask. I found out maybe about two hours before that someone that they had already uh, worked with as far as it being uh, a team member was not feeling well. So they reached out to me to see if I would step up and I said, sure. Oh. So I didn't have like anything set up. I had just downloaded the VM um that trace labs had sent out so mm -hmm. while we were going through the uh introduction i was <laughs> loading up the vm and trying to get familiar with it that's how we progressed through through the rest of the night so as far as that vm goes and i've actually done a video on simply cyber on how to spin up that particular vm so if you're interested uh check out that video but are you required to use their vm and their tool sets or what, what are the constraints and rules of the event theirs was mainly all open source stuff uh, or to help with it. So it got rid of all your red team tools that were uh, in a Kali, a typical Kali uh, VM or instance that one may use. So it was structured a little cleaner uh, in my, my opinion. So you wouldn't necessarily uh, have to go digging through things if you weren't familiar with, with a, a Kali Linux instance. Very cool. So Jess, I'm curious, from, from your perspective, what about the event was surprising to you or you know kind of subverted your expectations? Um, I didn't know what to think. I'd never done a CTF previously and I had always wanted to. It's one of those things when you start going towards cybersecurity, you're like, I'm gonna do a CTF at some point. But you know, I know we talked briefly about it before. It was one of those things. I was like, oh, I don't I don't know if I'm ready. I don't I don't know. But you know, I've been practicing some OSINT projects the past few months on my own. And then the CTF popped up. I was like, I could do this. Sure, why not? I'm just gonna go for it. And uh, originally there was another member on Simply Cyber who had a team started, but theirs was full. And then Casey spoke up. He's like, hey, we need a person. I'm like, great, let's do this. And so it just went from there. And for me, it was a really great experience. Uh, you know, I, I'm not used to doing OSINT on a, on a timed um, basis. Mm -hmm. you know, we only had four hours to do it. And while four hours seems like tons of time, it isn't when you start digging in there. So. Yeah, that that is that is cool that it is time boxed. Um, Michael, was there what was the 
I guess were there any interactions with other teams or are you were you just focused on working with our team and there was no kind of larger community um vibe no i mean i think um i think there was might have been some interaction on um casey's uh level but uh we were busy i mean um just to echo what jess said we had four hours and you know we thought oh this is gonna be plenty of time to dig in and and i think we hit the ground running and we realized it was a scramble to get as much as we could um so there mm -hmm. wasn't really a lot of time to interact with other team members even just trying to reach the judge which is one of the reasons i think uh you know casey kind of took on that that leadership role to individually for us to try to reach the judge just to, to talk about our pieces of evidence it was too much mm -hmm. um it, it was a lot going on so no not really did did you think that any osint um skills you may have developed prior were applicable or or it was like a totally different skill set needed for this event oh no absolutely um you know when uh i actually was ex first exposed to this um when casey participated in the last one and i saw mm -hmm. him i saw him um you know post something about that on linkedin and i reached out to him and i was like hey you know i i would be super interested in doing something like this um i had done some um, threat analysis stuff for another company um and then or i'm sorry after that um he recommended to me the uh osint course that um tmc provided Provides. And I did mm -hmm. that. I found that that both of those really helped me during this event on top of the training that um, Trace Labs puts out. Yeah, that that uh, Cyber Mentor Academy OSINT class is dynamite. I've, I've gone through that uh, myself. Loved it. So uh, throwing it back to you, Casey, is the team limited to four or can you have a larger team? And as far as the four hours go, what are your thoughts on that as being an appropriate time frame for the event? Yeah, so it is a uh, maximum team size of four. Um, mm -hmm. There were some people who were doing it just as a solo team, just one person. They have the prize structure sectioned off that way as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way the first place, second place, third place teams can win up to four of whatever the prize mm -hmm. is. And I think four hours when you're in it, it feels like is not enough time because you're going through and you're running up on the edge of the time mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I just got to get out this one more submission. Okay, we only got like 30 seconds left. Can I get the submission in in time? And you just hit that deadline. But then afterwards you look back and feeling the weight of the actual event hitting you after you're done and the adrenaline's mm -hmm. all gone. You're like, okay four hours is a long time to be doing this sitting and digging in and it's you know it's not easy an easy topic or mm -hmm. you know the actual content that you're taking in isn't necessarily the easiest to sift through yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask one of you so let, let me throw it to brian really quick brian it's not like you're just looking for a flag that somebody put like on you know the root of a file server or something like that. I mean, you're literally helping solve missing person cases. How did that affect you, I guess? For me, luckily the, the cases that we were looking at weren't very um, graphic or in depth as far as like maybe a missing child uh, or where it could have looked like uh, maybe a trafficking of some sort, um, which was good. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that definitely helped was being able to talk to Casey and say like, hey, since you've got a little bit of experience with this, what are the key things that I should be looking for or shouldn't be looking for? Because this is what I'm finding and this seems like it would be relevant, but it's not necessarily what they would like. Uh, and he did a great job with being a liaison on that side of things, um, which helped keep things clear when I was like, okay, at the end of it, I was able to just pretty much dump it and go go on with my day. That That is interesting. So would you recommend then, and I wanna ask this question uh, near the end of the interview about, you, it sounds like what you're saying is you should definitely work with someone on a team if it's your first event do it with someone who's already done it like without question that's got to be a best practice yeah i would say that for sure um and even when you start the event they go over kind of like bits of information that they would like to be submitted and how to submit it but because i was kind of a last second ad i was listening to that installing the vm then yeah. going over how the documentation process was kind of all at the same time and made it a, a little bit difficult to to get everything but working with someone who's done it is definitely like 100 percent helpful okay well that's good to know i'll definitely follow that practice myself i i wanted to do it 
Uh, I just didn't have the the cycles, but um, four hours is definitely like a reasonable time frame. I, I typically veer away from CTFs because they're usually weekend long, and then I like forget to eat and I like tune my family out and everything else. The four hours, it definitely, like Casey said, it didn't feel like it was enough. At the same time, it was really good because you were able to not necessarily get super involved where like you would just be processing over and over like what was going on, what you may have been able to do to possibly help. Like if you just had a little bit more time, made it pretty good to be able to just kind of dump and not sit in that long-term memory. Michael, real quick question. Was there any like line of inquiry you went down that was like a dead end or like any false red flags or not red flags, false flags, whatever it is. Like, sure. I mean, I think that happened every five minutes. You know, you, you go on to somebody's <laughs> social media page and is this person really a friend? Are they a relative? Is this somebody they just know through Facebook? Um, I mean, I think that kind of thing happened to all of us. Final question, Casey. Uh, I do really appreciate you reaching out to folks and, and building the team and entering the event and, and doing all the good that y'all did. I'm, I am a little curious. Uh, how did... Um, with all this evidence coming in and maybe false positives, real positives, and just just mentioned hundreds of people working on the same cases, is there like a Kanban board or is there like a Trello board or something? Like how is how is information being shared in a way that's reasonable? Trace Labs has their own portal and submission platform now mm -hmm. that that's what we use when we find flags, evidence, tidbits of information. We can take that we submit it through their platform. They take it, it gets assigned to the judge or it gets sent over to the judge that's assigned to your team. And the judge will go through, review it. On our end, we put in, provide a link to where we found the information, a screenshot if possible, and then explain how it's relevant to the case. The judge takes that, they review it. If they approve it, it gets put into like a collection of evidence that all gets combined together and then ultimately given to law enforcement as a, mm -hmm. like a portfolio. If another team finds like a, a photo or, or a friend connection or something like that, do you guys get to see it as well after the judges approve it as a piece of evidence? Nope. So, they, it's all okay, so you guys could be submitting the same evidence as other people. Okay. Understood. All right. Uh, we're just about at time. Any final thoughts from anyone in the grid up? And just if you if you have any final things that I didn't cover that you want to just kind of indicate, otherwise I'm, I'm going to wrap this baby up. No, I was, right. was going to say that um, if you do participate in this, I, Trace Labs tells you this in, in the, but do not get hyper-focused on something for too long because that was something that happened to me is, is I just ended up getting hyper-focused on one you know, small group of things and I ended up losing a lot of time. And it wasn't until I like kicked that out of my head and started moving on to something else that I was able to finally start finding things. So yeah, I would just suggest to anybody who's going to do it to start working at a strategy with your team, you know, work out possibly rotations, work out communication channels. That would be the biggest help ahead of time if you're going to do these. So. Awesome. I get, I get mocked for, for being so structured, but they, they have a purpose. They have an intent. I love it. So thank you, Jess, Casey, Brian, Michael. Really genuinely appreciate you guys sharing your experience on the Trace Lab CTF event. The next one is in August on August 7th. Again, as they mentioned here, it's a four hour event. Uh, and it really does make an impact in helping law enforcement locate missing persons. So really genuinely appreciate all the work you did. And thanks for coming on Simply Cyber and sharing this. Thank you. Thanks for having us.